Another interesting way of using the visualizer is to use it as an input device to create animation sequences. Oh, right. Okay, so we're going to drop the camera down now, here, and point it that way. And then what I'm going to do is put a backdrop behind it and create like a stage area. So I'm going to use the lights just to hold that in place. And then you can see there what the camera can see, and it's created a stage area which I can now place figures into to animate. How does this work with, with packages on a, a laptop? Well, it'll work with any software package that you wish to use, which has got a feed coming from a camera device of any kind. So um, you just click on the camera icon and it will pull the feed through from this device. And is it quite robust? I mean, little hands and, and little fingers can, can get in there and, and have a go? Oh, yes, no problem at all. Yeah, it'll stand up to all of that. So there's our feed coming through and that's what we can see. And if I want to now create animations from this sequence, all I have to do is press the capture button here and it will take a snapshot of what we can see at the moment and then I simply move the figure and repeat. And I can carry on all day doing this if I wish to. Which I'm sure you have done I in will the past. Do, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and Again, have great fun. What subjects can really utilise this? Um, it's probably English more than any because it promotes speaking and listening and it, you can recreate scenes from plays for instance or texts and put them on here. I had an A-level English teacher talking to me once who said this would be brilliant for recreating scenes with her A-level English group but I've also done the same thing with nursery children when we've wanted to an animate caterpillars for instance in a lesson that we were doing about mini beasts. So any level you can work with really just have great fun with it and just be creative. And again it's about using your imagination having, having a going seeing what you can get out because I yeah. just looked at that and thought actually I suppose you could, with a music class, you could even have a go at sort of mocking up sort of small music videos. And yeah, indeed, you could. So when I've done that, I could um, close that and replay that back here. And you can see what we've just produced there, a little animated sequence, like so. And then if I close that down, I can show you something else. So if I exit that... And it's very and simple, so isn't it? It's all very click one, click two, you're done. That's right. So on here, there's the same little pirate sequence with some music on there as well. And again, for, for young children and, and young and old, really, just great visual great stimulus yeah. And, yeah. and making you think about things in a different way. Exactly, yeah. And very simple to use. Yeah, yeah. And again, can you, once you've done this, store it and, and, and it be put yes. onto a DVD? So, yes, you could do. You could store it away, put it on a DVD, distribute it if you wish to, put it on your website, be creative and you know showcase your children's work in this way absolutely brilliant to be able to do that on this slide here you're seeing what I've done is I've taken snapshots and saved them and then we've put that into a sequence so we could do story writing based on this either putting um, bubbles coming out of the speech bubbles coming out of the characters mouths and doing speech or writing text to go underneath with the story so we could do that kind of thing. And could you add audio as well? Because that, I know, gives children an, a, a lot of confidence, isn't it, to, to actually, you know, put something down, hear their own voices. Yeah, exactly. So on this next one here, what I've done here is I've recorded some children actually telling me the story. Alex told Jack about so, oh. so each slide tells one part of the story. And of course, that could be in any language. So we could actually create a sto talking storybook in French or German or Spanish or any language you choose. So again, great for learning languages as exactly. well. Exactly, yeah, yeah, great fun. And then uh, some other examples that we've got here. Here we've got Pirates of the Caribbean. So really, it is just all about using imagination. Yeah. And I suppose you can use figures, you could use... You could use plasticine anything. as well if you wish to. If I go down here, we'll show you an example of that. So here's a slide where we've used plasticine to model with exactly the same technique, but using plasticine instead. I love that. It does Fantastic. actually make me, it suddenly makes you just want to go, oh, I'd like to have a go. And yes, oh, it, it, it does. It's very hands-on. <laughs> it really kicks out uh, your enthusiasm, yeah. doesn't it? It's brilliant. Another example I've got here is a, a caterpillar. So a lesson that I was doing about mini beasts, and I got the children in the lesson to actually make their own caterpillars. So here's what they did. And then I gave them this example so they knew what they'd got to do. So that's it. So again, it's, it's, it's being able to show by example, but then letting them actually have get on board themselves. and have a go themselves. That's right, yes. So this was what they did in the, at the end of the lesson. They created the caterpillar and then they animated it and made it crawl across the screen. And I've done this with nursery children. Mm. We've actually had nursery children doing this activity.
very simple to use because all they've got to do is press a few buttons and they did all of that themselves. And again, you know, it's one of those things that to see the end result like that, especially yeah. for, for, the, for the young ones, yeah. uh, is fantastic. So motivating for them, really good. If I want to pull an image from the visualizer into a Word document, then if I open up Word here, I can pull a feed straight in from the visualizer and capture an image and pull it straight in, which again makes things nice and easy for me as a teacher because it might be a piece of student's work that I've placed underneath there that I want to show or a page of text from a book or an object that I've placed underneath the visualizer and I want to do some work around that and I want to place it in a Word document. So all I have to do is press insert here and then tell it that I want the feed coming through from a scanner or a camera, which is what this effectively is, and then it recognises that. I go custom insert here, and it says that's what I can see. Gosh. So if I now press capture, there is that same image now inside Word. It's as easy as that. It is that quick and yeah. that simple. It really is sort of two or three clicks of a button and, yeah, and you're there. there. And I can just do whatever I like with that, reformat it, move it around, change its size and build it into a document.